Hey guys, welcome back to the Bottom Run Legend 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to implement punching and fighting into your game, in which you can then damage the AI and eventually kill them. Now, in this one, the AI won't be fighting back and they'll just be standing still. However, we can advance on this in the future if wanted. So, what we're going to create is something which looks a little like this. So, we can go up to the AI, we can hit left click to punch. We have a random punch animation, so we'll play a random one each time. They then react with an animation and a sound effect. And then, if we hit them enough, they will die with another sound effect and a death animation and we can change how much damage it takes or how many hits it will take to kill them. So I'll show you this one again and then we'll get into it. So as you can see this is a very basic, very simple starter fighting one. However, this is very good to get into it and to just start off with it and then you can obviously advance upon it with better animations, better sound effects and stuff like that. So I'll show you how to do this now. So what you're going to want to do first is to import all of these animations and sound effects. So I've already done that but I will leave a link in the description down below for you to import them. You just drag and drop them in and press import all. So obviously we have these animations here and then the sound effects here as well. And also once you import your animations make sure that you select all of your animations which will be these green ones here. Select them all, right click and go create, create and in montage and you'll get an animation montage like that which is what we're going to be using. So make sure you do that for all of your animations. And you can pick as many or as little as you like. And then once you've got all that sorted, what we're going to do is I'm also going to be using an AI which I made in a previous episode. However, the only thing that I'm really going to have in here is, well, nothing at the moment, but I have this random roam code from before. So to create an AI, what you can do is just go to your third person character, control C, control V to duplicate, and that's now an AI. This will be your AI, you can just drag and drop in and that will now act as an AI. It won't move about, it won't do anything else, but you have another character in there, like so. So like I say, I'm gonna be using the one which I already have, but that is how you would do that. So we're not gonna open that off the moment, we're gonna open our character. So for me, that's third person, so I'll go third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you, this could be first, third, or whatever you've named it. And then once we're in here, what we're gonna do is this is where we're gonna create the code for us to be punching. So what I'm gonna do is find some space, and up in the top left, I'm gonna to go to edit, and project settings and once this is loaded we're going to go straight down to input down here and we're going to create an action mapping so if you just hit the plus there to get an action mapping and I'm just going to call this one punch or attack or anything like that and I'm going to set this one to be left mouse button but you can pick this to be named and have whichever key you like so it could be left mouse button right mouse button middle or F on your keyboard anything like that or even right trigger so if you can have it on console and stuff like that and then we can also add in key bindings here but essentially just create an action mapping and pick the buttons that you want then we'll close that and back in the event graph if we right click and search for that so I called mine punch so we can get that like so so basically if we ever press that button we're gonna be punching so out of this if we hold down B left click and get a branch plug that into pressed and for the condition I'm just gonna get is falling from the character movement like so and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be disabling the movement so if the player presses this while they're in the air the character will be just floating there which obviously we don't want so I'm going to do that like so and then I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this is punching like so so is punching question mark and then I'm going to just get another branch so hold B left click get the branch plug that into false so if we aren't falling we can then continue get is punching in there plug that into there like so is the condition. So if we aren't falling and we're not already punching, so come out of false again, this is then where we're gonna do the code. So if we aren't already punching and we're not falling, we can continue. So out of this, what I'm gonna do is get a reference to the character movement here. So drag and drop that in from the top left and just disable movement like so and plug them to the false of the branch there. And the reason I'm doing this is so that the character can't be moving while this animation is playing as that won't look great. So when they're punching, they're standing still. And after this, what I'm going to do is drag out of this and get a play anim montage. The target is self and the anim montage, what I want to do is have this as it can be any random animation which I choose. So to do that, I'm going to create a new variable. So hit plus variable here and I'm going to call this one punch anim montage array. And as it's got array in the title, we're obviously making this into an array. So firstly, we'll change it from a boolean to an anim montage. So anim montage object reference and select the little icon next to it and just change it to an array, which is the little three by three grid there. So you could also just right click on the return value here, promote to variable, and then change it to an array, but I'm just doing it this way. So then if we select that and drag and drop it in and get that, come out of there and get a copy and plug that into the anim montage like so. Get an animation from this array, but what it's gonna do is always get the first one 
and we don't have any in here. So if we compile this, we can then put some in here. Now I currently have seven animations, but you put in as many as you want and as many as you'd like to have. So what I'm gonna do is just get seven array elements here, like so, and if I just minimize that like that, I can just do this a lot easier. So if I then find these in here, so they're under new anims for me, I then have these animation montages. So what we can do is just select it, press the little arrow there, and we're gonna be implementing all of these in here. Now I don't want the dying ones, I just want the punching. And so once you put in all of your animation montages like that, we can maximize this again. And now this array is full of our animations that we'd like to use. So how do we then get a random one out of this? If we come out of this integer here from the get copy and we just get a random integer in range, we can then do this. So the minimum will be zero, the maximum will be how many we have. So we have seven, so we're gonna put this as six as we start counting at zero. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is then obviously seven values. So if we get a random integer between zero and six, we can then get a random animation from this array here. And that will then play it. And then after this, we're gonna come out of the return value here and get a delay, meaning that this will just wait until the animation has finished playing. So then once the animation is finished, what we want to do is come out the character movement again and just set movement mode and set this as walking so that the character can then walk around again. I'm just gonna double click this to get some reroute nodes like so. And then after this, we just want to set is punching back to false again, so that we can then do this again once we've finished that punch. So we can compile and save that, and that is all we need to do in the character blueprint code-wise, but we do need to do one extra thing, and then we're done in here. So if we go over to the viewport here, what we're gonna do is just add some box collisions on the player for hitboxes. So what I'm gonna do is just select the mesh and then use animation asset. So it's then in a T pose like that, which will make this a lot easier. And in an add component, what I'm gonna do is get a box collision like so and i'm going to call this one right hand or hand right anything like that and we're just going to drag and drop that onto the mesh parent socket will be the right hand so hand r and then we'll just move this to where we want it and scale it down to be the correct size that we want just so it covers the hand and arm nicely so you can put this wherever you want scale this up to however you want but this is just where I want it and how big I want it to be. So the reason we're doing this is because when the punch animation happens, it will come out of the box collision, meaning it won't have a proper collision on it. So if we do this, it's just a lot smoother and a lot better. And also if you have different ones, you can then choose which ones do more damage. So if you have a kick, the feet can do more damage than a punch or the other way around. So I've done that and I want to do that again. So just duplicate that, but this time it's gonna be for the left hand. So then parent socket would be the hand left and we can just keep it. So since it's duplicated, we'll do that, but we'll just flip it on the Z so that it's then covering the correct part of the hand. And so that is now working perfectly. And now if we select the mesh again, we can go back to use animation blueprint. And as you can see, they're sticking with the hands like so. But now that is all we need to do in the character blueprint. So we can compile, save and close that. And everything else is gonna be in the AI. So if we then find our AI blueprint here again and open it up like so. Again, ignore this code. This is just from a previous episode, but I'm not gonna be using it today. So if we go down here and just find some empty space and get and right click and get an event begin overlap. So event actor begin overlap like so with the other actor as our character. So for me, that's gonna be cast to third person character. But for you, this could be first, third, or if you've named it and the object obviously being the other actor. As third person character, what we want to do is get is punching. So this variable that we made earlier, this boolean. And then out of this, what we're gonna do is hold down B, left click to get a branch. And that is gonna be the condition. And just plug those in there like so. So basically, if we are punching, then we can fire off this code. If we're not, so if they overlap and we're not punching, nothing's gonna happen. Out of the true, what we want to do is play sound at location. With the location as just get actor location like so. And this is gonna be the sound of the AI getting hit. So we can actually create that now as well. So if we minimize this, go to the audio that we have, I'll delete these cues and remake them. So what I want to do is this is the damage. So I'm gonna right click here, go to audio, go to sound, sorry, and then sound cue. I'm just gonna call this impact cue like so. I'm gonna open that up straight away. In here, I'm gonna right click, get a modulator, plug that into the output. And then for the input of the modulator, I'm going to get a random. So I get random like so. And this is where we're going to decide to have a random sound which we have. So I have three impact sounds here. So I'm just going to drag and drop them in there like that. Drag them down and then plug those into the random. So I'm going to add another input as I have three. 
and then just plug all of those in. And like I say, this is just going to get a random sound effect each time. So we have random animations, random sounds. This just makes it a lot less repetitive and a lot more dynamic. So once that's done, we can save and close that and put that into this play sound here. So I called it impact Q like so. And then after this, what we want to do is once again, play and in montage. And this one is going to be target self again. But the anim montage this time is going to be impact. Now, if you have more than one impact animation, you can do the same thing we did in the character blueprint with getting a random one. But for me, I only have one, so I'm going to leave it like that. But obviously, you know how to do that since we did it earlier. You would just do this technique here. And we're going to do that again later on if you'd like a recap. So if we go back here and that's done like so, what we're going to do again is come out the return value and get a delay. So it is going to be waiting until this animation has finished. And once it has finished, we're going to reduce the AI's health. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable here. So hit plus variable. I'm going to call this one health. And I'm going to set this to be an integer like so. so then off of completed of the delay, I'm going to set health like so. The input of this, I'm going to get an integer minus an integer with the top value as being health and the bottom value as being damage. So I'm going to create another new variable and call this one damage, leaving as an integer and plug that in the bottom there like so. And now you can set the damage to whatever you like and you can also set it in different places. So when you punch, you can set it to 50 or when you kick, you can set it to 70. They're quite high, but obviously you can set it to whatever you like. So for me, I'm going to set the health default value to 50 like so and the damage default value. So make sure you compile to set that. I'm going to set to 10. So this means I have to punch the AI five times in order to kill them. So I think that's going to be good. And out of the return value of this set health, I'm going to get a less than or equal to. So an integer is less than or equal to an integer. And I'm going to leave that as zero. So this then obviously means if the AI has died. Return value of that, I'm going to go into a branch. So that's obviously the condition like that to the set there. So once we set the health, if it's less than zero, so the AI is dead, we're then going to do this code here. So off of true, we're going to do this false nothing. So true, we're going to play another sound at location with once again the location being get actor location and that's just because we want it to happen where the AI is not 10 meters away we want it to happen right here this sound what we're going to do again is minimize this go back to our audio folder right click sounds sound cue this one is going to be death cue like so open that up and we just want to import our death sound effect in there I only have one, so that's just going to go straight in the input. But the reason I'm doing this in a queue instead of just putting it straight in is as this has the location based in it and it works a lot better. So we can save and close that and plug that in there like so. So we have the death sound queue like so. So make sure it is the queue like that. After this, we want to do it, play another anim montage. So play anim montage is very similar to what we did earlier. Target once again being self. And here is where we're going to do the random animation again. So what I'm going to do is create another variable, call this one dying montage array. Once again, change it to an anim montage object reference and change it to be an array like so and like we did earlier. And then if we compile, we can set the default values, of which I have three different animations. So we can get three different array elements there, find our animations in our content browser, exactly the same as we did earlier, and just input these in there. So I've got dying montage there, and now we have all of those in there like so. So we can maximize that and again that's the exact same way we did it last time so we can drag and drop get dying montage array get a copy plug the return value of that into the anim montage and we're going to do the same thing with the random integer so we'll come out of the integer here and just get a random integer in range with the minimum being zero again but the maximum this time being two as we have three different montages so now it's going to play a random dying montage when the AI dies as well. So if this, what we want to do again is get another delay, plug that in there, but this time we're not going straight from the return value. We're gonna go from the return value into a float minus a float, plug that in there, and we're gonna minus 0.5. Now you might wanna change this for you, but just for the animations that I have, this works better. Otherwise the AI would start getting up when they're dead. So we want to have it like this. Obviously mess about with this value to get it perfect for you. But if you're using the animations that I'm using, this will be what you want it as. But you may also not need this if your character doesn't get up at the end of the dying montage. So then out of the delay, what we're gonna do is just destroy actor, meaning the AI is completely dead. And so now this is all of the code done. There is just one final step. So if we have a look at this before we do that, what's gonna happen is when our character overlaps this and we are punching, it's gonna play the sound of the impact 
play a montage for the impact, decrease the AIS health, if the health then goes below zero, it's going to die, so it's then playing the dying sound effect and the montage, and the montage will be random, and also when we're punching, we are going to be playing a random punching montage as well. And then after the montage is finished in the death, sorry, it's then going to also destroy the actor, meaning they have completely died. So we can compile, save, and close that, and the final step is to go into our animation blueprint. So I'm going to go to content, mannequin, animations, third person, and MVP, and you're going to want to do this for your character and for your AI, but if they're using the same animation blueprint like mine are here, then you can just do it in the one. And what we're going to do is just go to this default anim graph here. So you might be in the state machine like this, so just go to the anim graph up at the top. Out of the state machine, we're going to get a slot, default slot, and plug that in there. And this just allows animation montages to play. So if we compile and save that, this should now all work perfectly fine. So if we hit play to test it, if we left click, you can see our character is punching, and they're playing a random punching animation as well. It's not always the same one. So that's working. If we go over to our AI, we walk into it, nothing happens. If we left click to punch, also nothing happens. So let's see why that's happening. So I imagine that is something in our character. So if we open that up again, I think I'll probably have the collision settings wrong on here. So I've noticed what it is, is in this code here, we don't actually ever set is punching to true. So we set it to false at the end, but we forgot to set it to true. So to do that, we're just gonna move all of this code out here, drag and drop is punching there, set it off there and just put it to true like so. And this just means that the AI will then actually take damage when we are punching because it will register as punching as well. So now we can pile save and test that again. We can still punch perfectly. It's going to be random animations like so. And then if we go over to the AI and then we punch, you can see it's now working perfectly like that. So if we punch this many times, so that's twice, I said it needs to be five. So then we get three, four, and five and they should now be dead as you can see like so. So that worked perfectly. So if I get more in just to test it out, I can show you what this is going to look like. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so that we can have a punching animation ourselves, and it'll be random each time and we can do this on any button press we like. And we also have AI in which we can then punch as well. They will react to it with an animation and a sound effect and if we punch them enough they will then also die with another sound effect and another animation like so. So like I say, this works perfectly. Everything we wanted to do, we now have. And like I say, this is fully customizable by you in the ways that I showed you. You can use your own animations, your own sound effects, and you can add more or less. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.